G'day everyone and welcome to PsyQ. This is this week's science wrap up. Now, it's been a huge week in science policy. There's been multiple scandals and interesting reports coming out of the White House. So let's get right down to it. Story number one this week, the Office of Science and Technology Policy, or OSTP, have just released this report called Science and Technology Highlights in the First Year of the Trump Administration. Now, why is this report important? Well, it's being heralded not just as a report, but as a plea, a cry of desperation by OSTP to please be recognized by the Trump administration. And there's a couple of reasons that we think this. First of all, the OSTP doesn't usually put out these kind of first year highlight achievement documents. They usually only put out reports on problems and then the proposed solutions. That's what they do. They come up with policies to fix problems. So they didn't put out a report in the first year of the Obama administration. And the fact that they're bragging now shows that they're making a big effort to point out how much they are aligned with Trump's political agenda. All the way through this report, they're talking about things that we know he likes, like how uh, science affects business and the economy. So they're really making an effort to show how much they support Trump. Number two, the report is making a big song and dance about crediting Trump for all of these amazing achievements in everything from cybersecurity, energy, and even winning Nobel prizes. But the thing is, Trump's only been in power for just over one year. Most of these initiatives weren't started by Trump. They were started by President Obama or even earlier. So crediting all these achievements to Trump seems like they're just trying to get into the president's good books. It's no secret to anyone that Republicans have been trying to cut science funding, particularly in things like climate change. So this is an attempt to align with Trump and avoid those budget cuts. Number three, notice Trump's name is in the title. That's extremely unusual. If anything, reports should refer to the president, not by name, just president. Here he is, a big quote by Trump on page two. In fact, look on page three, his name is mentioned in every paragraph. This is a stunning play to his ego. So why include Trump's name so many times? Well, pundits speculate that the OSTP is taking tips from the National Security Council, who said, we put Trump's name in as many memo paragraphs as we can because he keeps reading if he's mentioned. They said they strategically include the president's name in the reports to ensure that he keeps reading and doesn't get distracted. So mentioning Trump so many times is the OSTP's way of keeping him entertained. Now, even though this report is clearly a desperate plea to the Trump administration to please don't cut science any more than you already have, um, it's also full of really cool achievements that the United States has earned in science and technology. So if you're looking for some highlights in this gloomy 2018 year, check it out because we have done some pretty cool stuff. Story number two is a good news story. Australia, my country, has just announced an ambassador for women in science. Now this is a new ambassadorship position and the Australian Prime Minister, Malcolm Turnbull, made the announcement of the creation of this position to coincide with this week's International Women's Day. And what he said was, it is vital that we encourage and equip girls and women to take big strides in science and technology so all Australians can benefit from the contribution that their discoveries will make to our lives, our well-beings and our futures. So why is this ambassadorship in Australia relevant to the United States? Well, a lack of role models in STEM was identified as the key factor that influences girls to either join or leave STEM subjects. So just one example of this, on Twitter, 92% of the most followed scientists are male, showing that there is a huge lack of visibility for female scientists. So appointing an ambassador for women in science shows that, at least in one nation, the country has said, you know what? This is a national issue. It's important to everyone that we have more women in science. And not only is it important, but we can actually use the government to help fix the problem and build those relationships. That's what ambassadors do. They build important relationships on behalf of a country. So having an ambassador for women in science is great news for Australia. 
but it only further highlights the shortcomings that we have here in the US. And this is the situation here. Not only in the United States do we not have an ambassador for women in science, we have no ambassador for science at all. We have no presidential science advisor. We have no chief of the Office of Science and Technology Policy because that position was left unfilled when the Obama administration left and the Trump administration took office. There's no chief technology officer. That position was also left unfilled by the Trump administration. So for at least 12 months, we've had no one representing science in these key political positions. Now, why is that a problem? Well, science, technology, and innovation are key drivers of the US economy. And one of the biggest reasons that the US economy is booming today is because we've always been the most innovative. We have the best trains, the best ships, the best weapons, the most productive farms, and the best cures for diseases. And that's because of innovation, science, and technology. As a nation, if you're not inventing new stuff, if you're not worried about how science is being done or who's doing it, then you can't expect to maintain your position as a world leader. And the United States claims to be the leader of the free world. So having no ambassadors for science in the US will be hugely detrimental, especially as we try and maintain a position on the global stage. And story number three this week, of course, is about the Texas primary elections. Now, ever since Trump was elected to office, scientists all around the nation have been taking a greater interest in getting involved in politics. Groups like 314 Action have been formed just in the last few years specifically to train and support scientists who are intending to run for office. And so this week's Texas Democratic primary elections was the first test for scientists who were seeking election to Congress. And the results were a little bit mixed for the scientists. The bad news is that Jason Weston was knocked out of his race. Weston is a clinical oncologist competing for the seventh congressional district in Houston, Texas. He's out. Uh, John Powell, a retired geologist, he also lost. He was running for the 36th congressional district in Eastern Texas. So a little bit bad of bad news to see those two scientists eliminated from their races. But on the plus side, Mary Wilson came first in her race. She is a former Austin Community College mathematics professor, go maths, turned Christian minister. Interesting combination of science and religion, but you can do both. And now while she came first in her race, she only scored 31% of the vote. And since she didn't have a majority, she'll now have to compete for the Democratic nominee in a runoff election against Joseph Kopser, a army veteran who is also a huge advocate of science-based policy. He holds a degree in aerospace engineering and is officially endorsed by 314 Action. So whether it's Wilson or Kopsa who wins the Democratic nomination on the 22nd of May, it will be a definite win for scientists. Wilson and Kopsa are competing to represent the 21st Congressional District of Texas. Now, that's an interesting part of Texas. It includes parts of Austin and parts of San Antonio. The seat is currently held by Lamar Smith, a well-known Republican anti-science climate skeptic, who ironically is also chair of the House Science Committee. Now, he's retiring this year, so we're happy to see him go. The area is also home to an extraordinary technology hub there in Austin. So having a mathematician or an engineer in charge of that district really does seem like a nice idea. Uh, the Democratic nominee, whoever it turns out to be, will face the Republican nominee, and that's going to either be Ted Cruz staffer Chip Roy or businessman Matt McCall. They were the two top vote getters in their Republican race. So the 21st congressional seat is presently held by Republicans, by Lamar Smith. Now that he's retiring, it's really gonna be a stretch to see that a Democrat and especially a scientist can win that seat. But if there's any time when you think Democrats would show up to vote, it's this election right after the Trump election. Uh, but unfortunately, the statistics show that Republicans still showed up in greater numbers than Democrats did. Now, this seat is one of the only seats that Democrats in Texas have ever had a chance to win. So watch this space on May 22nd when Wilson and Copsa go head to head. If you're living in that 21st congressional district in Texas, make sure you show up to vote on May 22nd for your preferred Democratic candidate. And no matter where you live in the United States, 
TYT viewers, it's very important that you show up to vote in the 2018 midterm elections. Hi everyone, I'm Jade Lovell, resident science nerd on the Young Turks Network. You're watching SciQ and we know you don't want to miss an episode, so please click the subscribe button down below.